In this episode, new ideas on flat images or flats, a little bit of image processing in Serial, a new toy and my best ever picture of M31 Andromeda Galaxy so far. So don't miss this. You will also find a time code in the video description since the video is a little bit longer than usual. So have fun. It's so dark. Hi guys. Um, today I will make a revision revision of M27 Dumble Nebular. Yeah, quite good conditions. We have new moon. Um, now I'm um, in the Borderscape 5 region and we have yeah no no clouds about seven degrees celsius and i would say it's probably the clearest night this year so far so beautiful okay guys so i have to change my plans actually i wanted to do a re-revision of m27 dumbbell nebula but the thing is behind me I think you can see this here there's a street and this is also behind me there's a city and every time I make a picture in this direction so in the direction of Zajitar so yeah in the night sky of course uh, in the direction of Zajitar and this direction of the city i can see all the light pollution of the city and so on so this doesn't really work so far yeah it's also not so high in the sky so that's a problem and so i have to do something else i will do andromeda galaxy again so this is in this direction so in the opposite direction and this looks much nicer and as I said before, it's such a clear sky. Again, I have some ground fog. Fog is coming and going. But not so much, so it's quite okay. So I will do Andromeda Galaxy again. Yeah, as I said before, it's so nice. It's a bottle scale 5 region here and wow it's so dark and no clouds and wow great so let's see what's possible <laughs> again i will do this with my canon m50 dslr camera no telescope no filter but i have a new toy let's see If you are more interested in what's inside the Skywatcher Star Adventure Pro Pack, I made a separate video. You will find it here. So I bought a new Skywatcher Star Adventurer uh, star tracking device. Actually, this is the first night I will try this and yeah, let's see how this works. This is my new setup. I have a new tripod. It's more yeah hopefully more stable and yeah that's a sky adventurer and as you can see there's no camera mounted so far so because i'm filming with the camera at the moment but yeah that's my bike <laughs> i will polar align and then i will make some pictures and then let's see how this works but i have a quite good feeling Okay, I forgot something. I forgot the ball head for the camera. This makes everything a little more complicated, but I think I can do this. So, see you later.
Okay guys, so just a short intercut um, um, This was a ball head I forgot in the video and also during shooting and It's very cool to use because it's easier to orientate your camera in the night sky um, instead of only using this and this so in principle it's also possible but uh, the ball head makes it much easier and there's another advantage I recognize um, since I'm only using my camera with a quite light uh, objective um, <clears throat> normally when I'm not using the ball head I have to switch the counterweight against here and then I have problems with the rotation of this ring so since this makes everything longer um, I can put the counterweight far away from from this ring and I can um, yeah move it another thing uh, you may recognize in the video and maybe wonder uh, why is he using this long bracket and this counterweight thing uh, just for a small camera? Actually, you have this um, quite small ball head adapter and I could just insert it here or install it here and then put my camera directly on the ball head here. So without the whole counterweight thing. Um, the problem or the good thing when I'm using this one here, I set it like this, right, with the whole counterweight thing. Yeah, it's not moving. And then the advantage here is I can check the polar alignment using the scope here and looking through it. And then here's a hole. When I'm using this thing directly on the camera, the hole is blocked. So I cannot check my uh, orientation in the night sky with the polar star, Polaris. And so, yeah, that's why I'm using this configuration. I'm, and I'm very happy with it. So let's get back to the video. Since the polar scope illuminator is quite sensitive to handle, I packed it in a box and also wrapped it in some tissue. Here you can see the red light for illumination and you just put it on top or into this bracket. And you're ready for polar alignment. Since there are so many very good YouTube tutorials on how to polar align your Star Venture, I will not repeat this here, but you will find a link in the video description. Woohoo! Yeah, it works. 20 seconds with the star tracker. And what you can see here, this is Andromeda and this is the Milky Way. So... I changed the ISO a little, um, so let's try longer exposure, let's try 30 seconds. Okay, let's check, 30 seconds, um, yeah, I think there's a little bit of star trail. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I think I will try 25 seconds. Okay, guys, I tried 25 seconds now. So 30 seconds was too long. So yeah, this is the first time with my tracker. So the polar alignment is not quite precise, I think. Uh, but I'm quite happy with 25 seconds. Um, um, as I can see now, it looks, yeah, I cannot see much star trail, maybe a little bit, but 
I think I will leave it like this. And here's Andromeda Galaxy. And with 25 seconds at this ISO, I can see the um, arms, the spiral. I think just at least a little bit. So I will make some pictures and with 25 seconds. So let's see. Winter is coming. Okay, I think I made some nice pictures. But let's see at home. And so I will heading home. Hi guys, so last time I did my imaging of Andromeda Galaxy and it worked pretty well or very well so condition was almost perfect so quite cold, no skies, bottle scale 5 region so very good. The problem however is I tested some stacking with my images and again using Lankios, um, I saw the same thing as before, some star trails. So this is the result of my stacking using Lankios software on a Mac. As you can see there are not only star trails, but you also can see an uneven star disk. And this is directed in the same direction as the star trails. So not real star trails or not from too long ex exposure times or something. This time I used a star tracker. But um, this is caused by stacking or let's say alignment using line chaos. And I always have problems with this or most of the time. So this time I will try to stack with Serial. And I already tested it in the past, by, but I always had problems uh, with the manuscript because I'm only capturing images, so lights and darks and no biases and no flat images. And I will change this today. So um, it's sunny, I have a blue moon, so I can do my flats with a white t-shirt method. I will just show you how I do this and show you my settings and I think in the evening I will do my biases. So let's see. In general it's good to generate your flats in the night you're shooting and you should not change the orientation of your camera because of dust position and also you should also not change your focus. This was not possible in the night I shoot, so, so what I do here is focusing on distant objects. It is important to set your shutter speed to the fastest your camera can do. This is what I'm doing here. And then you set the same ISO number as you shot in the night. Then you take a white t-shirt or the white parts of your t-shirt and then you put it around your telescope or your camera objective like I show you here. You also orientate your camera or your telescope to the even illuminated background. Here I use the blue sky for example. And then you make some pictures. The number depends on you. There are different opinions on that. Some people say maybe 20. Some people say 50 images is enough and some people say you should not take less than 100 pictures. What's best for you? Maybe you can try yourself. 
After generating my flats, I came home and took a closer look at these pictures. And yeah, this is an example for the picture I took, for the flat I took. So you have the vignetting effect on the edges and so on. And this is what you want to exclude or reduce using the flats, right? Okay, you have a... Yeah, you would, at the first sign you would say it's quite even. Maybe you see some structure here. Mm, okay, I thought, okay. I watched some YouTube videos and they said, yeah, you should do these flats on the very sunny day, direction of the blue sky and everything is nice using this uh, white t-shirt method. So I did this and um, yeah, I stacked everything with a cereal and processed a little bit. And then I saw some kind of strange structures in my pictures, uh, like uh, patterns. Okay, so this looked very strange and I thought to myself, actually this could only be introduced by, uh, by the flats. And to confirm my hypothesis, uh, I took another picture and two days later we had a, still a sunny day, but there were also some clouds. So from time to time the sun was blocked by clouds. And I did exactly the same, of course, the same settings, the same shutter speed, same t-shirt of course and then i was getting this picture so in general of course it's darker because the sun as i took this picture was blocked by some clouds okay so again you have this vignetting effect you want to see here right but in general i think this picture looks more even uh, color wise so it's uh, better distributed i would say you don't have these uh, kind of artifacts here. But you will only recognize um, these artifacts if you maybe took a closer look at a smaller pictures of this one. So on the left side you see a flat from the full sunlight day, so no clouds. And on the right side you can see the yeah, darker picture. Also very sunny day, but also um, some some clouds and the sun was blocked by some clouds from time to time so that's why it's um, darker but you will also see that these kind of artifacts you can see here here and here for example but also on other areas of this picture um, you cannot see this on the right side so picture so this is more even distributed i would say this makes perfectly sense right so I used, as I said before, yeah, it's a, a standard t-shirt, right? It's not very thin, it's not very thick, it's standard. But when you look through it, for example, here's a window or sunlight, you will see some structure, of course. It's not even, of course. And also if you take the double t-shirt here, or t and double t-shirt, you will still anyway see this structure. And that's normal because that's the way it's produced, right? And of course, if you have a brighter source of light, you will see these patterns here and the t-shirt much better than when you have a darker um, light source. As I will show you later, I did uh, some comparison. So stacking and processing the same images, only changing the flats, right? And this makes a big difference as I will show you later. Okay, so when you're searching through your pictures uh, on your computer, you have these uh, small thumbnails. And I recognized using my camera and my setting, uh, the picture I took on the sunny day are more blue and this makes sense of course, right? So you will have more blue sky you can see through, through the t-shirt on a very sunny day and when you have a day with more clouds, still sunny but also some clouds, of course it will look much more yeah, white. And I recognize that this is a good method to exclude the pictures you don't want to have. You just exclude the blue or bluish picture and you're only working with the little darker but white and even distributed white pictures. 
So in total, I would say it's not always the best option to take your flats on a very sunny day because you will see the structure of your t-shirt and this makes the whole picture uneven and you will have some uh, patterns in your post-processing. And here you can see the difference. In total, I use the same data for both images except flats. The picture on the left hand side was made with flats on a full sunlight day and the picture on the right hand side was made with flats on a sunny day but also with clouds. On the left side you can clearly see the patterns, on the right side you have no patterns or only just a reduced pattern. So this is a lot easier to post process in your program. Okay, so just as a reminder. <laughs> Let's get back to the further workflow. Okay, so first things first, uh, don't use line cues as I did. I almost always had problems during alignment and stacking with uh, alignment on my Mac. So in the future I will only use Serial for alignment, stacking and maybe a little bit of image pre-processing. Um, yeah, let's go to the results. As you can see here, I compared these uh, two stacking methods, uh, Lankios, uh, against Serial. And yeah, important to note, um, I used the same data, of course, so exactly the same data, uh, exactly the same number of data of uh, so images and so on. So yeah, I think you can already see this. Uh, I have a non-even disk here in the Andromeda galaxy. I have um, yeah, quite severe star trails and they are not from too long exposure times as you can see when you compare to Serial. And I'm also losing, really losing um, information here. So when I stack the image with Serial, I could really barely see M110 and I could yeah, almost not or not really see this uh, when using stacking and alignment with um, Lankirus. So yeah, use Serial for alignment and stacking if you are also working with a Mac. All right, let's speak about image processing. So alignment and stacking in Serial if you are using a Mac. As I said before, I had um, severe problems with alignment and stacking um, in Lankios. So that's why I'm using Serial now. Since the reel is based on manuscripts, uh, image processing is quite easy and fast. There are just two points you have to consider. The first thing is you need these four folders with your bias frames, dark frames, flat frames and lights. You open the reel and then you just tell the software where your folders are. So for example, um, I have it here on the desktop and say open. These are actually only the two points you have to consider. So just go to scripts, select OSC processing and the script will start automatically. Siri just finished and um, so Alignment and stacking is ready and you could actually uh, go and save your file now, but uh, you can also do some other things here in image processing tool in Serial. Uh, I would not go into detail here, but I will show you just uh, something. So let's open your result and this is called result.fit and you just double click and open it. Okay, you cannot see very much now. So you go here to linear and uh, then you go to auto stretch to see what's going on in your picture. And as you can see, this looks very uh, strange, um, but you can process this. 
either with uh, Serial a little bit at least or in other uh, image processing software. Okay, first, for example, we can check the image, right? And on Mac, you go to Comment or Apple and you use your touch bar and you can zoom in. And um, yeah, let's select, for example, this region with Andromeda Galaxy. Then you right click and then you select crop. And I think this looks quite nice. Surreal is a very powerful tool and you can do many things here. I will only show you two or three things. So let's open a file, a result file. And this is a, yeah, from old pictures, a new stack of M47 Orion Nebula. So you open this. Now you can go to auto stretch to see something. Don't be shocked, it looks strange, I know. Um, this is a house <laughs> and th these are some trees and they are moving and stacked together they look a little strange. So, But everything is okay. So I would say first we will crop this picture a little bit. So make a square and then right click and go to crop. Okay, much better. <laughs> so now you can, yeah, can maybe go back to linear mode and let's stretch this a little bit. So let's go to image processing and then the second point here, histogram transformation. And then you click on the right bottom here and then you will get your stretch. Okay, this looks quite nice, okay. What you also can do is color calibration and there are in principle two methods you can do this. Um, so you go to image processing, color calibration and then let's try this first. You go to photometric color calibration and what you do is you just enter your deep sky object, the number, for example, the Messier catalog and then you select this one. And then you go to get metadata from image and you press OK. And what it will do is it will try plate solving. So finding the location um, by the position of certain bright stars. And so this worked, but I also had some issues with this. So it's not always working, but this time it was, was working, was okay. So plate solving worked. And then you go can go to RGB and this looks quite nice so far. So we did not so much, only stretching and photometric, automatic photo, photometric calibration. And this looks quite good. If this does not work, you can go to image processing and choose the other option. So go to color calibration and then color calibration. And what you set is on the top here, you set the darkest point and here on the bottom, you choose the brightest point or um, position in your, in your image. So what you have to do, you go to one channel, red, green or blue. Let's see, we go to the red one and then we select a position here, which is quite dark and has maybe no stars or not such a bright star. So you select this and then you go to use current selection and then you go to background neutrali neutralization. Okay. And then you do the same thing with your brightest um, object or bright star. For example, this core region of M42, you select this. Then you go to use current selection and you press apply. Okay, and it's it worked. So let's zoom out. And check how this looks like now. Okay, so 
yeah, as before, quite nice. Okay, so these are two important things you maybe should do. It's auto searching and uh, photometric calibration or color calibration. What you also can do is you go to image processing and say background extraction. And you go to generate. So as you can see, this will generate some squares here. And what you do is you select or select uh, positions broadly distributed over your image and you also can deselect some. They should be distributed all over your picture, but they should not be in your uh, region of interest. You also have to go again to your red, green or blue channel to do this. And you can just by right click, you can deselect uh, squares, which are maybe more in the um, position of your interest. So either left click to add, point or right click to remove them and yeah you do this what you also can do is here by clicking here or here you can add or remove um, squares and yeah that's it and then you just go to apply all right then close it and let's go to rgb again Okay, so now you can see it looks uh, much nicer, I would say. Now you can either do some other processings here. I did not use everything, so there are also other YouTube videos uh, how to do all these uh, modifications here. But let's say that's it. You can maybe crop this a little bit. Um, Let's go here, right click and say crop. Okay. And now you can save your file. Let's go to save. Maybe you uh, save it on the desktop. Let's say M47 result is the name. And then you select um, that you want to save it as a TIFF. And then you go to TIFF uh, to save. And for later image processing, it's very good to select 16 bits here. Okay, let's save. So this is your result after stacking and a little bit of modification in Surreal. So now we can open it, for example, in GIMP or in Pixinsight or Photoshop or whatever you want. And you can further process your image. Yeah. So, but this looks quite nice and I think I can go further with processing and I'm using GIMP. Um, yeah, so let's go to the results. Wow, heavy sunlight here. So now you've got your um, aligned and stacked image, TIFF file from Serial Stacking. And what I'm using is uh, GIMP for post-processing. I loaded uh, the file here into this one. And first thing I'm doing here, so I will not go into detail about post-processing of these images, um, but just in principle, uh, you just copy this layer and then um, let's do some stretching. So you go to colors, levels, and then what you do is you, yeah, you turn this on the left side a little bit, and then you, this one on the right side. And you repeat this. All right, so I uh, stretched the image a little bit. <laughs> and um, yeah, now it's a little greenish. <laughs> and you also, by the way, can remove a green uh, color or reduce green color and so on and also other things in theory. But let's do this in GIMP. 
Uh, I will try to reduce this a little bit. Um, again, I go to colors, levels, and then here I select green and can reduce this a little bit. Okay, and let's compare this. So this is only the stacked version and that's the stretched and little green reduced uh, image. And yeah, you can do and you should do uh, many other things here. I cannot go into detail. So I think there are many very good YouTube videos about uh, how to process your Astro images in GIMP. I will not do this here. Very often you have the problem that when you change something on your deep sky object, for example here M31, um, this will also change uh, your color. And sometimes you have, when you increase the saturation, for example, in your deep sky object or emission nebular, for example, something with um, yeah nice colors, or maybe also more colors than uh, this um, Spiral Galaxy M31. And um, yeah, then some, sometimes you have your very good um, or very nice um, color in your deep sky object, for example, Nebula. But you will also um, apply this to your, to everything, also to the stars. And then very often the stars uh, look quite strange and you also sometimes you have other effects but there's a solution you can use a program which is called starnet plus plus to remove all your stars uh, from your deep sky object and here's how this works Another new software I used uh, for image processing for M31 is uh, Starnet++ and you can get Starnet++ if you just type in in your browser and actually the first uh, result will show the source to this uh, software and you just go to files then select version 1.1 and then you can select your um, system, for example, Mac or S. And yeah, the download will start. After downloading, you will get such a folder with uh, different uh, files and so on. And what you do is you go to this one RGB Starnet SH and you open it with a text editor. Most probably you have to change uh, these names. First you call stars.tiff and the second one in this case uh, for example you can choose um, m31 starless.tiff and yeah you save this. So after alignment and stacking and serial um, you may made already the post-processing at least a little bit in your uh, software. For example, I use uh, GIMP. Then I saved the file so far uh, with, uh, it's called uh, star.tiff. Uh, this was my first result. And yeah, you just copy the file here in your standard plus plus folder and yeah, you change the run RGB Starnet, as I said before. Then you open the terminal and then you enter CD space. Then you just uh, put your folder here inside and press enter. And then um, you just take the run RGB file SH here, put it here and start. Uh, most probably uh, when you are using a Mac you will get this message uh, permission denied. So what you do is to solve this you go to Apple then your security information and you will change that um, this program will have the permission to do anything on your Mac. Once Starnet++ is running it looks like this. And actually that's it. 
What you will then get is uh, your Starless M31 and I will show you how this looks like. Most probably like this. So it looks uh, quite strange, but the good thing or the advantage uh, using the Starnet++ Plus Plus to remove your star is that you can uh, focus on your object of interest, your deep sky object, and you can modify and post-process only the deep sky object um, you selected uh, um, independent from your stars. So that's very helpful. And I hope this was helpful for you. Okay, so I made some nice pictures of M31 Andromeda Galaxy in the Baldur's Gate 5 region. So quite a dark region with my new Skywatcher Star Adventurer Star Trekker. Okay. But the next day we had still a quite stable weather situation. So the night was great. It was a clear sky and so many stars um, already visible from my backyard or balcony in the city in the Baldur's Gate 8 region. So heavy light pollution. But I thought just make some images of M31 and compare this to the Baldur's Gate 5 region again without a star tracker because I cannot see Polaris from my backyard. So I did this, but I have to add something. I shot all my images with this Canon M50 camera, DSLR camera, and I really like this camera, but there's a major disadvantage when using it for astrophotography. There's no internal intervalometer, and you also cannot connect an external one. And this is a big problem. Um, usually I'm connecting my camera to my smartphone and then I press. <laughs> and this is the reason, this is the main reason and maybe that's the only reason why I did not take so many pictures in the past. So most probably 30 to 50, sometimes maybe 60 or 70 images, but not more because I didn't want to press this 300 times. But this time I did this. So I did 359 single images uh, from my balcony, also um, from M31 Andromeda Galaxy. The alignment and stacking in serial with 31 images was very fast. It took about three, three and a half minutes. However, when I started the process in Serial using my 359 images, by the way, the highest number of images I ever took in a single night, I was always getting uh, error messages because of insufficient disk space. So in total, 95 gigabyte were necessary and I think 55 gigabytes were missing. And as you know, uh, when you're using a Mac, uh, space storage space on your Mac is quite expensive. So I didn't have this. And so I connected an external hard disk uh, to my Mac and I started again. I knew that this would slow the whole process, right? But I was not prepared for what was coming. <laughs> Syria just finished. <laughs> it was so long. Um, so just to give you the information, um, I started yesterday at 10 to 11 um, p.m. And it just finished uh, today at yeah 5.40 p.m. So as you can see here, so for my MacBook Air with fast M1 chip to process 359 images in serial, it took almost 19 hours. <laughs> don't do this, don't do this, <laughs> if you don't have to. <laughs> but let's see, let's see the results, I'm excited. So now I compare them. The total integration time was quite similar. Um, 
I think it was one minute more. In the darker area, using my Skywatcher Star Adventure Star Tracker, I took 31 images and 25 seconds exposure times each. And from my backyard, I took 359 exposures uh, with two seconds each. So total exposure time difference is about one minute. And here's the result and the comparison of these two. Wow. Wow. I really did not expect this. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. You can see more detail with 359 single images for two seconds from my um, light polluted city backyard than from the darker area with 31 images at two seconds exposure times each. You can even see or guess some dust lanes here in this image. Wow, crazy. That's the best picture of M31 Andromeda Galaxy I ever shot. Woo! <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> crazy. Wow. Wow. Very happy with this. Wow. Crazy. I know it was a long video this time, but I hope you had some fun and maybe you're learn something from this as well so yeah please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you like this and see you next time clear skies